Good evening, I'm Bo Williams, and welcome to The Seven. Let's get a look at the Big Seven stories right now. And topping the list for us tonight, Tennessee representatives telling us they're disappointed with the failed first vote to secure a new House Speaker. As we've told you, the majority nominee, Republican Jim Jordan, failed his first floor vote with 20 fellow Republicans voting against him. Now the House is in recess. Congress members will reconvene at 11 tomorrow morning, expected to take a second vote after nominating speeches. Congressman Tim Burchett of Tennessee tells us he voted for Jordan and says he hopes the second vote will be enough to elect the new speaker. I think Jim is, he is the most popular member of Congress among the grassroots. <clears throat> and if you remember the last presidential election, 20 million of those folks decided to stay home across our great country. And I believe that um, those folks, would, it would re, uh, reignite them more for the party with Jim as speaker. Until a new speaker is chosen, the House virtually unable to vote really on anything. As things stand, the minority leader, Democrat Akeem Jeffries, has more votes for the position, with all 212 Democrats giving him their vote today. Now, he would need only five Republicans to gain the speakership. Of course, we'll let you know when another vote heads to the floor. We do have some breaking news we need to get you up to date on just into the 6 Newsroom tonight. Knox County Sheriff's Office needs your help locating this man. Take a look. This is Taylor Boyle, his family, putting out a, a missing persons report Sunday. He was last seen wearing blue jeans and a black and white flannel. We're told he was possibly in the Halls area. If you've seen him or maybe you have some information, you are asked to contact Detective Ballard with the Major Crimes Unit. The number at the bottom of your screen, it's 865-215. 2243. Our second Big 7 story for you, a devastating end to a missing persons case in East Tennessee. A missing 18-year-old out of Blount County has now been found dead. The Blount County Sheriff's Office tells us they located the body of Garrett McCamus late last night. Deputies believe McCamus was involved in a car accident. His body found inside his vehicle in Chilhowee Lake. Now, McCamus was reported missing Sunday, but was last heard from late Friday. A friend received a message from him saying that he had pulled over along U.S. Highway 129 because he was having trouble breathing. THP continues to investigate what led up to this crash. Moving to our next Big 7 story for you, a contraband investigation in an East Tennessee jail. A Scott County jail employee arrested and accused of selling drugs to inmates. According to Sheriff Brian Keaton, the jail was going through an internal review. A short investigation revealed that a correctional officer, 34-year-old Jessica Adkins, could be involved in some illegal behavior. Well, last night, she was arrested by her boss, the jail administrator, and the county's drug agents. Adkins now faces charges for introducing contraband into a penal facility, along with drug possession, drug exchange, and official misconduct. Sheriff Keaton shared his disappointment in a statement saying, quote, Adkins' conduct is disgraceful and we will operate with zero tolerance against her alleged actions or anyone else who chooses this path. He continues saying, quote, she went from employee to inmate in a matter of minutes. Next on the list, new information on a, a fatal accident off Asheville Highway. A Georgia woman is dead after a man crashed into a food truck park over the weekend. THP just shared the crash report with WATE. We're told 30-year-old Aaron Knott was driving down Asheville Highway at an excessive speed. We're told he tried to turn onto Arms Road but lost control of the car, ran off the road, and hit a concrete curb. After that initial impact, we're told the car rolled, hit a chain link fence before hitting a parked food truck set up at the four-way food park. The passenger in the car, 34-year-old Faith Corbin, was pronounced dead at the scene. Next up for you tonight, big potential changes to education across the state. Lawmakers in Tennessee considering rejecting all federal education funding. Legislators in the Volunteer State have now formed a 10-member committee to investigate the matter. While other lawmakers argue the $1.8 billion goes toward the most disadvantaged students and that rejecting the money would only hurt students struggling the most. Governor Lee says that this move will lead to more state and local control over schools. In 2019, 11% of school districts' revenues in Tennessee came from federal dollars, with each district receiving between $314 and $2,500 per student. As of now, there is no indication on when the Tennessee committee will announce this recommendation, and lawmakers say they are keeping an open mind on this issue, but the federal government is sounding the alarm. Next up, an East Tennessee community providing resources for children caught in the middle of, well, big moments. 
Roan County looking to implement a new program to help provide immediate support to school-aged children who have experienced a traumatic event. Now, the program is called Handle with Care and is run by the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation. Here's how it would work. If a child experiences a traumatic event that may involve a first responder, that person would be trained to identify the child at the scene, find out where they go to school, and send the school a confidential email giving them a heads up, if you will, that the child may need a little extra attention. A lot of times kids are embarrassed about the things that are happening to them um, or they don't know how to articulate what their needs are and so this gives adults a little bit extra awareness so they can make sure those kids are getting that regardless of the situation or if they're able to talk about it or not. The purpose of the program is to be discreet about potential needs a child may have. Today was just an informational meeting. Agencies will now have to complete training to be able to implement the program. Roan County Schools and the Sheriff's Office both on board to bring this program to that area. All right, we're moving down the list for you. Big changes on the horizon for areas of Knox County. Today, Knox County uh, Mayor's Office released its draft comprehensive land use and transportation plan. The plan has been in the works for two years with input from stakeholders and the public. The plan, known as Advance Knox, aims to guide the county's development of transportation and land use while considering future growth in the area over the past two years. County officials determine which parts of the county will be planned growth areas and which will remain rural spots. Hardin Valley, Gibbs, Chapman Highway were named as a few areas where they believe growth is expected and expansion there will not create undue expense to the taxpayer. Through public input, they've learned people like the rural character of the community. However, 70,000 more residents are expected to move to Knox County over the next 20 years. Uh, so we have to balance both the needs for the rural preservation as well as the growth. And what we've done with that is, you know, put some restrictions on the, the rural area to, to not really allow that sprawl to occur. But to accommodate the growth, we've also allowed for the expansion of the planned growth area with higher intensity uses so that we can marry both those two together. Now, the next step for the uh, drafted plan is for the Growth Policy Coordinating Committee to update the county's growth policy plan, which will begin during a public meeting coming up not too long from now on October 24th.